Hello, everybody. Good morning or good evening. I hope you can hear me well. And um, yeah, I'm Vuk um, I'm a, a squad lead for a, a Kubernetes Cloud Native Engine uh, squad in Deutsche Telekom Technik. Uh, I guess I should be uh, sharing also some slides. I just need to, to find them and we'll go on. Quick moment. I think we are good to go. So, um, as I said, I'm a squad lead uh, in uh, uh, Deutsche Telekom Technik, uh, uh, same team as Max and Marcel. Uh, we are a uh, network technology unit of Deutsche Telekom in, in Germany. Uh, the audience from US uh, uh, will uh, probably uh, uh, resonate with uh, the logo on, on uh, my pages because the T-Mobile, how we call them, T-Mobile US is a part of the, the same group. And um, a little bit about me, um, I started my career in mid nineties as a developer, uh, but went uh, probably a too long detour through my management executive careers, many years out of technology or without any con connection with the technology to land on what I'm currently doing two years ago in uh, to this very hands-on um, position. If you'd like to, to talk to me, um, you have my contacts here. Um, sometimes you can see me on, on the Twitter and uh, LinkedIn posing with uh, some very hot servers in the background. And since I'm now, after many years, back to uh, what I started uh, to do, my um, uh, sorry, my GitHub page is uh, essentially when you visit me, uh, saying uh, back to the root. Uh, my colleagues uh, spoke uh, briefly about how we live uh, and and uh, run uh, GitOps in the production for large scale. Uh, infrastructure management, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, my idea is to introduce the notion of, uh, of uh, GitOps loops uh, and how they bring us to the uh, autonomous infrastructure uh, or closer to the autonomous infrastructure and why that matters. Uh, but let me talk uh, about something completely different uh, for the beginning. Um, if you have a, a, a ball uh, standing on the flat uh, ground, it will pretty much, if there is no external force, uh, it will pretty much stay there uh, and nothing will happen. But in a dynamic world, uh, this assumption that there will be no uh, change and no influence is uh, uh, pretty much unrealistic. Therefore, when an external force comes, it will move the ball into a certain direction. Now, this is not too dramatic. Uh, let us look uh, in a bigger picture what happens if, for example, we have a situation that the ball is on the edge of the cliff, uh, if the force acts in the same direction as it's acted in the first case, uh, you guess what will, will happen? The ball will uh, stroll away and game will be over. I guess many of you, including myself uh, from our childhood, uh, remember the situation when ball went just simply two away and the game was uh, uh, finished. Now, there can be a worse situation. Like if you look at this situation, ooh, it seems pretty hopeless. So nothing we want our ball to be in. But let us consider another uh, case and uh, another situation, which is uh, like this. You have a ball uh, and you have a valley. And uh, if the force acts uh, on the ball in the direction of valley, then the ball will go and after a very short time, it will reach its state of, uh, or its condition of equilibrium where it is stable. And uh, this state in physics uh, is called the lowest energy state. Now, uh, in this state, there are two characteristics. The system doesn't have a tendency to move or to change the state, but even if the external force is forcing it to change the state, it has a very important ability to maintain its, its, its uh, state of, or its condition of equilibrium on its own. So this is, I would say, uh, uh, quite calm and a and, and, uh, good state to be. But <laughs> why am I telling you all of that? Uh, what does uh, the 
lowest energy state and uh, uh, GitOps uh, uh, have together? What do they have to, to do with each other? Uh, well, uh, any SRE out there uh, who is building complex uh, uh, distributed system, they all have a, a common goal. We all have a common goal. Build a stable and reliable system. And if I look at uh, these, these natural states, say from the physics, from the mechanics in this case, but in any uh, other area, as somebody who is very enthusiastic about physics, uh, these states are reminding me uh, very much to the states of our infrastructure um, and uh, our applications, cloud native infrastructure and cloud native uh, applications. And uh, for an SRE, if we drive that parallel uh, even further for an SRE, the state of lowest energy or lowest energy state would be the perfect one uh, to achieve. So there is no wonder that this is uh, what uh, we implicitly all uh, want to have. Now, the GitOps loop is something uh, that we experienced uh, in a practice and came to it kind of by, by, by chance uh, uh, to that setup. Uh, but GitOps loop is something that is uh, creating an environment and setup in which your distributed system application, or in our case, uh, large scale infrastructure, uh, will be able to find its states of uh, equilibrium and will be able to maintain its state by itself. Uh, our GitOps loop uh, uh, looks like that. Uh, we have a um, management cluster, which is uh, having a Flux uh, as a GitOps, uh, GitOps tool and agent, and have a cluster API and points to one uh, repository in the Git uh, where the clusters are defined, where the infrastructure is described. Uh, when a cluster is created, uh, or definition of the cluster is committed, then this management cluster is creating that bootstrapping that, that cluster or when there is a change managing and updating that cluster. And it is equipped already at the bootstrap time, uh, zero touch to equip itself uh, directly from the another Git uh, uh, repo. And by that, we are closing the loop in which any change, uh, be it in the infrastructure, be it in the in the uh, platform as a service, how we call it, uh, a layer, application layer, component layer, would be uh, uh, very much uh, uh, converging to the to the state of equilibrium. That uh, looks pretty much uh, uh, comparing to my parallel, like uh, this on the picture on the on the right, uh, with additional feature because every attempt to change the state. Uh, is recorded. So in the example of ball, somebody can steal the ball and change the state. In this case, not. So uh, if you manage to push your infrastructure into the uh, GitOps loop like that, then you are uh, able to reap a number of benefits. And one benefit is that this infrastructure is largely autonomous and can maintain its state of equilibrium and uh, uh, can uh, uh, actually uh, uh, reach it uh, without uh, too much attendance or without any attendance practically from the humans. This means that uh, uh, you as a SRE team or any SRE team who is having that task uh, can manage much more instances of that infrastructure. Uh, or if you don't want to manage more, you can have uh, much more time uh, to do the engineering work, which is uh, probably much more interesting than repetitive work um, on maintaining the things. and. Any change is recorded, as I mentioned, you have this audit trail. And uh, what is interesting uh, um, effect is that you use a Git uh, as, a, as a single uh, user interface to manage your entire infrastructure. So if you manage to, to uh, create a GitOps loop for your infrastructure, and if you have ever experienced uh, uh, the infrastructure or applications with a high potential for drift, um, you will appreciate your GitOps loop. That was uh, everything I wanted to uh, share in this short uh, uh, lightning talk uh, pitch. Uh, I hope this gives you some inspiration and some ideas uh, how to reason about uh, uh, managing large-scale infrastructure uh, with the GitOps. I would certainly be happy uh, to hear what you all are doing uh, in this regards, if it could help you maybe uh, make your uh, infrastructure more autonomous. And um, until that time, uh, um, have a great rest of the event and uh, enjoy your day.